in this video, we're going to take a look at modeling with parametric equations. So the good news for this video is we're not introducing anything new here. All we're looking at is modeling real life situations using parametric equations. And I think that the best way to demonstrate this is to run through a couple of practice questions. So if we just start off with this first question here, then we have a particle that moves along a path such that its position after time t seconds relative to a fixed origin O is defined by the following parametric equations. So we can see the parametric equations here. So for the first part, then part A, we just want to find the coordinates of the particle at time t equals 2, so after 2 seconds. So to find the coordinates then, nice and straightforward, all I'm going to do here is substitute t equals 2 into this equation here for x, and then into this equation here for y. So x is equal, so let me just write down when t equals 2 here, so when t equals 2, in that case then x is equal, so I get t squared, so that's 2 squared, we've then got minus 3t, so that's minus 3 times 2, And then we've got plus 2 here. So if we evaluate this here, I get 4 minus 6 plus 2. And this simplifies to give us 0. So x equals 0 when t equals 2. And then for y, well, nice and straightforward, it's 3 times 2 there because t equals 2. So 3 times 2. And we get 6 there. So therefore, when t equals 2, the coordinates then, so coordinates, the coordinates of the particle are given as we got 0 there for x and then 6 for y. Okay, so 0, 6 there for the coordinates. And there we have it, so that's part A done, hopefully nice and straightforward to get us started. Now for part B, it says hence or otherwise find the distance from the origin to the particle at time t equals 2. So the fact that it says hence or otherwise, that would suggest that we're going to use our answer in part A to help us answer part B. So the coordinates then of the particle at time t equals 2, that's 0, 6. So if we're looking for the distance from the origin to this coordinate here, well, in this case, because we're going from the origin to this point, well, it's nice and straightforward. It's simply an application of Pythagoras. So the distance then, let's call that D. That is equal to the square root. We take the square root then, and we would square both of the coordinates here. So it would be the square of the x-coordinate plus the square of the y-coordinate. And then we take the square root of that. So I've got 0 squared plus 6 squared there like so. So here I'm going to get 0 plus 36. We've got the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is simply 6 there. So the distance here from the origin to the particle at time t equals 2, that would be 6 units there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution to part B. And then finally for part C here, it says find the coordinates of the point where the particle crosses the y-axis. So we just quickly draw a sketch here. That's my y axis, and this is my x axis. So I'm not going to draw the curve here or anything like that, but if we just think about where the particle here would cross the y axis. Well, that would be any point here along this line. So along this line here, that's when x equals 0. So it will cross the y axis when x equals 0. It crosses the y axis when x equals 0. Okay, so in that case then, when x equals 0, I get t squared minus 3t plus 2 equals 0. I get t squared minus 3t plus 2 equals 0. Okay, so that's squared there. Let me just redo that just so it's clear. So t squared so t squared minus 3t plus 2 equals 0. So what we're going to do here then is solve for t. So I need to find the values of t here. So 
Hopefully this will factorize, and in this case, it does indeed factorize. I'm gonna get double brackets like so. <coughs> so we'll get a T at the front of both of these brackets here. So two numbers that times to give me two and add to give me minus three. Well, here I'd get T minus two and T minus one there. Okay. So we get two values for T here. So this quadratic here is equal to zero when T equals two. When T equals two and when T equals one. Okay. So. We already know the x coordinate for both of these points here. So I'm going to get two points here. Okay, so this parametric curve will cut through the y axis at two points because we've got this quadratic here and these two values of t. And obviously, both of these values of t here are greater than zero. So that's fine. It satisfies that condition. So when t equals two, we've already found that point here. We did that in part a. So if you recognize that here, we've already done that work there. So therefore, when t equals two, It crosses the y axis, so it crosses y axis. So it crosses the y axis at this point here, so 0, 6. So that's fine. And then what about when t equals 1? So when t equals 1, all we're actually doing here is what we did for part a, but now with t equals 1. So in that case, then let's do it up here um, for part C. When t equals one, well, for x, then I'm going to get one squared minus three lots of ones, so that's minus three and plus two. So obviously that would be zero, and we didn't even need to bother with that. Obviously, the x coordinate must be zero. That was a little bit unnecessary. Um, but then if we repeat that for the y coordinate here, so y is equal. Well, that would be three lots of one there because t equals one. So three times one. And that gives us three there. Okay. So in that case, then when t equals one, it crosses the y axis. It crosses the y axis at zero, three. Okay. And there we have it. So that's the solution to part C. And that gives the solution to question one. If we just say look then at one more practice question here for modeling with parametric equations, we've got this question where we have the path of a professional skateboarder from the point of leaving the ramp to the point of landing. And that's defined by the following parametric equations. I can see the parametric equations here below. So we're told that X measures the horizontal distance in meters from the point of leaving the ramp and Y is the height in meters above ground level of the skateboarder after T seconds. So for part A then, all we're looking for here is the initial height of the skateboarder. So for the initial height then, well that would be when t equals zero. So the initial height, that is when t equals zero. So t equals zero. So if we're looking for the height then, what I need to do now is substitute this value of t here, t equals zero into this equation for y because we're looking for the height in meters okay so in that case then y is equal this would be minus 4.9 times 0 squared plus 3 lots of 0 and then we've got plus 6 at the very end so this term here would be 0 this term would also be 0 and we get left with y equals 6 Therefore, y equals 6. What that tells us then is the initial height here would be 6 meters. The initial height is 6 meters. Okay. And there we have it. So that's all we need for part A. So now for part B. It says find the value of k and also state the time taken for the skateboarder to complete their jump. So what we're looking for here is the upper bound on this interval for t, this inequality here. Okay, so how do we find the value of k? Well, that would be when the skateboarder lands. Okay, so to the point of landing. So in other words, what I'm looking for then is when this quadratic here is equal to zero. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do then is set y equal to 0. So if y equals 0, what I get then is minus 4.9 t squared plus 3t and then plus 6. And this must be equal to 0. Now, rather than working with this quadratic here being negative, minus 4.9, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take everything over to the other side. So basically just times it through by minus 1. So we get 4.9t squared. We get minus 3t and minus 6 there. And that's all equal to 0. So from here then, what I need to do now is see if we can factorize this. Well, clearly I can't factorize this here. Okay, so this isn't going to factorize. So from here, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So using the quadratic formula, using the quadratic formula, well, what would we get here then? So t here, that's what we're looking to solve for. That is equal then to minus b, so that's minus minus 3, so that's 3, plus or minus the square root. So I get 3 plus or minus the square root then, so it's b squared minus 4ac, so that's minus 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 4.9, times that by c, which is minus 6 there, like so. And this is all over two lots of a. So 2 times 4.9 there. So 2 times 4.9. So all I need to do here then is simplify this and evaluate this here for t. So if I simplify this here, I get 3 plus or minus the square root. So here I get 126.6 if we evaluate everything underneath the square root here. And this is all over 9.8. Okay. So here, if we evaluate each value of t then, so obviously we get two values of t, we get one positive value here, so 3 plus the square root of 126.6 over 9.8, and then the negative here, so 3 minus the square root of 126.6 over 9.8. So for the two values of t then, so here we get that t is equal to 1.45. So t equals 1.45 and t equals minus 0.842. So minus 0.842. Okay. Now, obviously, t must be, well, zero or greater. Okay. So clearly, it can't be this solution here. So we cross that one off. And in that case, then t must equal 1.45. So what that tells us then is the value of k here is actually 1.45 because that's when he completes the jump okay that's when he lands so here then what i can see is it takes him 1.45 seconds to complete the jump okay so therefore 1.45 seconds to complete the jump And that also means then that k equals 1.45. Okay, and there we have it. So that's the solution to part B. Now for part C, we don't have much room here. So let me just quickly clear the screen. Obviously, do take a note here of any of this information, just in case you didn't get um, the solution to part A or part B. So for part C then, It says, find the horizontal distance the skateboarder jumped. <clears throat> so to find the horizontal distance then, well, that would be at this maximum point here for k. So that value of k, like we said, was 1.45. So k equals 1.45. Okay, so if you think about this, um, the skateboarder jumps from the ramp and they land at a certain point, say, over here. And we're looking for that horizontal distance. Okay, so what's that distance there? So... To find the distance here then, all I'm going to simply do is substitute this value of t that we found here. So we said it's k, that's also the value of t, completes it in 1.45 seconds. So 
What are we going to substitute that into x? Because x measures the horizontal distance in meters from the point of leaving the ramp. So when t equals 1.45, in that case, then x is equal. Well, in fact, let me actually use the exact value here. So for the exact value, um, let me write underneath. T was actually 3 plus the square root of 126.6 over 9.8. So we should be precise here, and I should use the exact value rather than this approximation here, or this um, rounded value here of 1.45. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to substitute this value of t here into x. So x equals 16 lots of this here. So 3 plus the square root of 126.6. Point six, all over 9.8 okay so here now all you need to do is put this into your calculator here and if you evaluate this correctly what you should find then for x is you get 23.3 there okay so that's in meters and i've rounded that to three significant figures okay and there we have it so that's the solution to part c and that gives us the solution to question two. And that actually brings us to the end of this video on modeling with parametric equations.